So far, we have just talked about CO2. But as we have seen last week, there are important other greenhouse gases to consider. How can you compare the impact of those other gases with the impact of CO2? That will be the main topic of this video. The relative impact that each greenhouse gas has on global temperature is different. The difference is partly caused by the fact that each gas has a different lifetime in the atmosphere. Methane, for example, breaks down much faster than nitrous oxide. Another important factor is that each gas has different radiation properties, which defines how they absorb infrared radiation. To take these differences into account, a concept was developed that is called the global warming potential. The global warming potential, or GWP, is calculated by determining the impact of the emission of a certain amount of a gas, say one ton, over a period of time compared to the impact of one ton of CO2. Usually, a time period of 100 years is used. For those who like equations, this is how it works. We integrate the radiative forcing, which is the impact that the gas has on the radiation balance of the Earth. It depends on the radiation efficiency of the gas and the time-dependent decay of the gas. In the denominator of this formula, you see the integration for the gas for which we want to know the GWP, and in the denominator you see the integration for CO2. So, in summary, the global warming potential is relative to the global warming potential of CO2. If a certain gas has a GWP of 5, it means that it has a global warming potential 5 times greater than CO2. The calculations for the GWP are complex. You see a summary of the outcome of such calculations here. These are the global warming potentials as they were determined by the IPCC for the most common greenhouse gases. You see that in all cases, the global, global warming potentials of non-CO2 greenhouse gases are higher than those of CO2. For example, the global warming potential value of 27 for biogenic methane. This means that the emission of one ton of methane will lead to a 27 times higher impact on temperature rise than the emission of one ton of CO2. We say that the emission of one ton of methane is equivalent to emitting 27 tons of CO2, at least when we look at the impact over 100 years. For this reason, when we are talking about greenhouse gas emissions, we talk in terms of CO2 equivalent units often denoted as CO2e or CO2eq. With this unit, we can compare the environmental impact of multiple gases. Let us go through an example. Assume that we use natural gas, but that during the production and transport processes, 1% of the natural gas is leaking. We start with 1 gigajoule of natural gas, and if, as we have seen, the combustion of 1 gigajoule of natural gas will lead to the emissions of 56 kilograms of CO2. Considering that 1 gigajoule of natural gas weighs about 18 kilograms, the leakage of 1% means that we also emit 0.18 kilograms of uncombusted methane. Looking at the GWP value for fossil methane, we can see that 1 kilogram of methane emissions has the same effect as 29.8 kilograms of CO2 emissions. So the 0.18 kilogram of methane will then have the same effect as 5.4 kilograms of CO2. We therefore say that the methane leaks leak com contributes 5.4 kilogram of CO2 equivalent emissions. The total emissions is the sum, so 56 plus 5.4 which is 61.4 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. So what we find here is that if there is a substantial gas leakage, and 1% is a substantial leakage, then the methane emissions contribute substantially to the total impact of the use of natural gas. It is therefore important to avoid such leakages. In earlier videos, we have discussed extensively about the emissions of CO2 and how they can be reduced. 
but emissions of non-CO2 greenhouse gases can also be reduced. We can distinguish three different ways to mitigate non-CO2 greenhouse gas emissions. The first one is to avoid the activities. For example, we could add eat less bovine meat to reduce methane emissions associated with ruminants. Or we could stop digging up coal to avoid emissions from coal mining. The second group of strategies would be to avoid the formation of the gas. For instance, instead of landfilling waste, it could be composted, in which case the organic, metal, the organic material is broken down without the formation of methane. Finally, if gas is formed, it could be captured and destroyed. For instance, the coal mine gases can be captured before emission and used as a fuel. In general, for industrial sources, emissions can be reduced to a large extent. For agricultural sources, also emission reductions are possible, but often to a smaller degree. Overall, also for non-CO2 greenhouse gases, very substantial reductions are possible. An emission reduction of such gases should be an essential part of any climate change mitigation strategy. So, we have now reached the end of the second week. The concepts introduced in these four videos will allow you to better understand the accounting principles used for measuring energy and greenhouse gases. These are foundational concepts necessary for understanding climate change mitigation and are important for next week when we will go into detail on the different aspects of emissions reduction. I hope you are enjoying the course thus far and good luck with the additional material for this week.